Is WWE bringing back the hardcore title? Kevin Owens isn't friends with CM Punk? The real reason the bloodline missed Friday's Smackdown and Saturday's Bash in Berlin, and more. I'm Ollie Davis, and this is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk! Because watching wrestling is the equivalent of working two full time jobs now, WWE's Bash in Berlin wasn't the only show happening over this past weekend. There was also TNA Emergence, AEW Collision, WWE SmackDown, and NXT No Mercy. Friday's Emergence show saw Zachary Wentz become the X Division champion in an Ultimate X match, Nick Nemeth retain his TNA world title against Josh Alexander in a one hour Iron Man match, three falls to two, and JBL making yet another surprise debut in a wrestling promotion, coming down after the main event and whispering something in Nemeth's ear. This follows JBL also showing up at Triple A's Triple Mania show, where he turned heel the side with Conan and Alberto Del Rio, all wearing the same trench coat and cowboy hat. He's like a crap Nick Fury in the WWE's anti-AEW partner promotion universe. AEW Collision saw Shida become Mercedes Monet's TBS title challenger for All Out, and Carl Fletcher had a fantastic match against Tomohiro Ishii. But the biggest non-bash in Berlin show of the weekend was definitely No Mercy. The show opened with Axiom and Nathan Frazier beating Chase University for the tag team titles, prompting Ridge Holland to turn heel on his own faction afterwards, taking everyone out and then putting Andre Chase through the commentary table. Speaking of heel turns, Zachary Wentz beat the recently healed Wesley. Thanks to their former Rascals faction mate and freshly crowned TNA X Division champion Trey McGuell stopping Lee from using a chair. Kalani Jordan and Obafemi retained their North American championships. Roxanne Perez also retained against Jada Park because this was more about the post-match angle. After being teased since WrestleMania, we got the actual debut of former stardom and marigold wrestler Julia. And the main event had Ethan Page retain his NXT title against Joe Hendry. Just... I said his name. I think I think I'm I think I'm safe. Furthering his feud with Trick. Well, oh my god! Name. Furthering Page's feud with Trick, who was the special guest referee. That's a lot of wrestling belts I just covered. So let's add another one. Raw star Karrion Cross has publicly pitched for WWE to introduce a new hardcore championship. It would be awesome to hold an Extreme Rules tournament right now in WWE to introduce a new Extreme Wrestling Championship. No rules, no DQ, pinfall, submission or knockout. WWE did try to recapture the chaos of the beloved Attitude Era hardcore title by introducing the 24-7 title in 2019. They quietly retired the belt in November 2022 though, because it sucked. It was partly because they only had half the equation. Yes, the hardcore title's 24-7 period was enormous fun, but it was also just as much about the actual hardcore wrestling matches with weapons and blood. Matches WWE couldn't feasibly do as a PG product on the USA Network and Fox. But as of 2025, Monday Night Raw will be moving to Netflix, where WWE are expected to make their programming more adult-oriented. Be more liberal with swear words, for instance. And Cross teased just that, replying to a fan who asked about Netflix wanting more programming. Bingo! The weekend also saw WWE SmackDown, which acted as the go-home show for the following night's Bash in Berlin. Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens going face-to-face -face in the ring, revealing Cody had picked up a leg injury ahead of their WWE Championship match. But there was a notable absence of one of the brand's biggest acts. The entire bloodline. F4W Online is reporting Solo Sokoa, Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga and Tongaloa and Roman Reigns were missing from Friday's Smackdown because much of the family went home for Afa's funeral, which took place this weekend. Jey Uso had also posted a picture of him at the funeral wearing a badge commemorating Afa and the caption, R.I.P. Uncle. Afa was a WWE Hall of Famer, not just as one half of the Wild Samoans tag team, but also as one of the main figures in the Anawai family the bloodline is based on. He's the uncle of Yokozuna, Roman Reigns, Amaga and Rikishi, and a great uncle to Jacob Fatu, Solo and the Usos, and was responsible for training many of the younger members. I put a link to my Bloodline Explained video in the video description below, where you can learn the full story behind that fascinating family. Afa died on the 16th of August, aged 80 from a heart attack, less than two months after his brother and wrestling tag partner Seeger had also passed away. 
It wasn't just the bloodline missing from Bash in Berlin, though. Triple H stayed in America because his oldest daughter is going to college. Can we all just recognize how lovely that is and how impossible that sentence would have sounded just two years ago with WWE's toxic work culture? It meant that Cody Rhodes took the lead on the post-Bash in Berlin media conference, really showing how highly the company thinks of him as a spokesperson. Because... He was even better than Triple H. After several PR blunders from Levesque at the post-show media scrums this year, Cody was able to answer questions about Vince McMahon with immense professionalism. When he was asked if he was going to watch the Netflix docu-series based on him, which had just been announced as coming out on the 25th of September. In terms of, am I going to watch it? Not to sound cheeky, I'm deep in a Game of Thrones rewatch, and that is a hell of a lot of commitment. I think there's a bit of misinformation in terms of WWE has no involvement in this documentary as far as I know. Firstly, Cody, just stop at the Battle of Winterfell. That's where the show ends. There's no more show after that episode. Secondly, Cody claims WWE has no involvement in the docuseries. It was actually WWE who announced their involvement four years ago, not any dirt sheets, during their 2020 Q3 earnings call, saying the project would be produced by them and Bill Simmons. That's why there's direct interviews with Vince before his resignation in the show. Four years is a long time, though, with Vince's multiple scandals and WWE being merged into TKO with new leadership. Perhaps WWE has scaled back on how involved they are since McMahon's controversies. Cody did admit he'll likely watch the series at some point, and was then asked if he and the locker room personally believes Janelle Grant's accusations, as the WWE roster have been silent on the matter. I don't think that's a matter of belief versus non-belief, but I wouldn't look at it as an active attempt from the locker room to be silent. We just are doing what we're doing day-to-day -day WWE business. The journalist pressed again as to whether he believes Grant's accusations, and Cody replied, I don't know enough about the information to give you a good enough answer there. I'm sorry. On to nicer things, Cody posted a video of him and Kevin Owens following their Bash in Berlin match with the title, Friends Then, Friends Now, Friends Forever. Just turn on each other already! Which is more than Kevin Owens can say for CM Punk. KO and Cody's friendship isn't just a pro wrestling storyline. In fact, it's so much of a shoot, there's an argument it indirectly caused the formation of AEW. When Cody decided to leave WWE in 2016, it was Owens who hooked him up with his very good friends, the Young Bucks, to help introduce him into the independent wrestling scene. That relationship went pretty well, with Cody, the Bucks, and Kenny Omega leading the rise of mid-2010's Ring of Honor, Cody joining the Bullet Club, them all running a little show called All In, and them all becoming EVPs of the first serious opposition to WWE in two Two decades, AEW, which gives some context to KO's comments about famed Young Bucks hater CM Punk in an interview with Mail Sport. We never talk. We have no reason to talk. We're not friends. We're not. We don't, you know, we're just not. I don't know. We have no reason to talk. If we work together, we will talk, but just not a thing we do. Owens also told Gorilla Position, We have no relationship. No, we're not each other's type of people, I don't think. There's like a 10-foot vicinity, I'd say. That if we enter in, then we have to kind of, hey, hi, otherwise we don't, and that's fine. It's perfectly fine the way it is. And when asked about the perception that Punk has changed as a person, KO said, I don't know that, and I don't care, to be honest. He is who he is, I am who I am, and it's fine that way. Wrestling friends... Another person who's friends with Cody is AEW's Ricky Starks, who attended WrestleMania 40 in person to watch Rhodes win. Starks hasn't been seen on AEW TV since that previous week's AEW collision, where he seemed to suffer an injury. Ever since, there's been reports and rumors about Ricky's AEW contract being up imminently, him being bound for NXT, and that he had turned down a storyline for his AEW return. And now Starks himself has denied that last one. Enough is enough. Usually I don't even speak on this, but it's tired. I never turn down anything ever. Just stop. Now go watch our review of Bash in Berlin by clicking the video on the right.